Good morning. Good morning. Holy cow. We are live on a beautiful Friday morning for Daily Drop-In. We are getting started here to kick off your Friday morning with the best of intentions. We have a ton of positivity that we're going to be able to, to kind of put into your day, you know, in addition to obviously some fun news articles. We're going to wrap up our conversation around revamping our communication plan, kind of go through all the fun that we've had this week, and then give ourselves a challenge so we can be incredibly successful as we head into not only a great Friday, but a great weekend, and then an upcoming week that we know is going to be even better than ever. We'll be right back as we get started here on this beautiful Friday morning, September 24th. We'll see you in a second. Good morning. Good morning, Brad Hughes. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, Ray Heward. Great to be back with you. Our Friday morning gigs are the highlight of my week. Uh, great to be back with you. How was your week, friend? Oh, it was it was a good week. It was a very busy week. I'm I'm having one of those weeks that I'm appreciative that I can kind of have a weekend coming up, I'll sleep in a little bit, you know, yeah. kind of restart, restart and kick off next week even better than ever. But but it's been a good week. I do want to give a shout out on Daily Drop-In. If you are watching us live right now, we're currently streaming on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. But I will let you know, there seems to be some sort of technical difficulty over on this end. It doesn't look like we're streaming in the private group. So if I'm, somebody, please, you know, there's a bunch of us here this morning, bright and early, could like double check that. Let us know if it's a problem. Maybe share the feed in there uh, just in case somebody is hunting for the Daily Drop-In morning show with the Teach Better team. That way they'll get it. But it is streaming on, it looks like, our Facebook page. So you know, Brett, how it is. Technical difficulties on a Friday morning bound to happen, right? We specialize in working through those difficulties. we got to bounce back, bounce forward. we got to just bounce, bounce, bounce our way into the Friday of uh, – of, uh, of a great daily drop-in and a great weekend ahead. We'll get through Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And think of it this way, Brad. I think you probably have at minimum one hiccup a day, right? So don't worry, guys. We just took care of it. You don't have any other hiccups coming your way today. It is Friday. It's going to be smooth sailing because the Teach Better team already took care of your like technical issue. No problem. I'm glad that we were able to hear, be here to help out. I'd love to give a shout out to one of my uh, school team members, Janice Moyer. Uh, Jan is a grade five teacher and was my guest on the Good News, Brad News podcast uh, last year. And and Jan's hashtag is mistake of the day. And so she normalizes mm -hmm. making mistakes. Uh, when she makes an oops or there's a setback, she just writes hashtag mistake of the day on the board. Uh, and as principal, boy, do I ever need those uh, do I ever need that grace to make those mistakes of the day? So that's something when we have our, our school email and something's gone out, we have to update it or, or or revise it. Hashtag mistake of the day. So I encourage you to incorporate that. It's actually really freeing and the kids love it. Oh, I really love it. It's like making a positive out of something that could have potentially been a negative. I think that's so wonderful. And the celebration that that making mistakes is is normal and and appropriate in so many different instances thank you katie miglin for jumping in the comments this morning she is saying the video is not in our private facebook group so i will obviously take a moment brad as we should to encourage you all to go join the private facebook group over at teachbettergroup.com however even if you're not in the private facebook group um we are thrilled that you're able to still tune in to the daily drop-in on the facebook page and also on twitter youtube and twitch um but I will give a little like encouragement if you're watching right now and you are in the private Facebook group and you can share the pages video over into the group, that would be stellar. So we Yeah, it's like it. a, we've got a little asterisk next to our stream there. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, but asterisk come find Not us. Yes. Yeah, so somebody <laughs> somebody do that that share that sharing. Um Growing up Jewish, we we would always say, like, you should always strive to do a mitzvah, like a good deed for the day. So share the stream, and that's your mitzvah for the day, too. We are getting a lot done, and we are only five minutes in, Brad. We've accomplished a ton. We sure have, Ray. I'm looking forward to digging into uh, our weekly theme of communication. Uh, in school leadership, uh, communication is everything. So I'm, I'm eager to 
review our week and eager to share what's worked and what mistakes of the day I've made recently in terms of communication. So uh, we've got some uh, good news of the day coming up. And of course, we've got our Teach Better family checking in. I love it. This is why I really appreciate that you choose to do this every single Friday because I really enjoy wrapping up the week with you. But before we get into all that, Brad, I do want to give a shout out really quick to, I was a part of a nonprofit fundraiser yesterday. It originally was a crew that started in Illinois. Now they're all across the U.S. and it's called Back to School. It's the number two versus the word. And their focus holistically is to get kids school supplies. So they make like those typical kits. I'm sure a lot of educators have seen the the supplies that you can get in a cute little box. Um, every single box that they provide to a student has a personal note from a member within the community. Um, and it says, you know, like things like have a great year, or, we're thinking of you. The notes can be as long as short as a volunteer chooses to write them. And then each kit allows a student to be successful in school. And so yeah. these are being delivered not only all across the Chicagoland area, but all across America as well. Um, but I thought it was cool. It was an organization that was founded in Illinois. They had a beautiful fundraiser event yesterday. Very, very, very safe with COVID. Did all the requirements for those that were um, fortunate enough to attend. And they raised a lot of money for our schools, which was so fun. So if you're on social media, um, you should definitely go connect with them. All their handles were like back the number two school IL specifically for Illinois. Um, but I just love connecting our network with groups that are doing good work that, you know, really just strive to support education, which is so fun. So yeah, the members of our network, Ray, oh, I, I, sorry, the, the members of our network are high, are, are extremely well positioned to carry that good work forward. It, it reminds me of what's come up in conversation uh, in, uh, in my at my site and uh, among other districts and even on the Teach Better team, it's, it's, it's leading from within. Uh, you don't have to necessarily have a leadership title to uh, take the lead and to make a difference. This organization you're describing in Illinois is making a difference from the inside out. They're meeting a need and then they're rallying uh, whoever can support them. And uh, as I mentioned, our, our Teach Better team is really well positioned to carry that great work forward in all of our districts and, and where we live and work. Well, what I love about it is that the teachers can choose to get involved. One of the teachers, one of the people that they had speak yesterday was an educator in a CPS in Chicago. And um, her focus was really that she was able to apply her class to get supplies and mm -hmm. she won. And so all of the students were delivered these beautiful boxes, all of with wonderful supplies. And all the teacher had to do was kind of nominate her class for that. Um, she was a beautiful speaker. She did a great job. And she's been in her elementary school. She was an elementary teacher. She's been in her elementary school for over 24 years. So she was doing incredible work in, in the Chicagoland area. I will say, Brad, we're going to do like a little thing here because you've kind of had some big things go on this week. I'm sure in a, in a many, a list that's very, very long, but for the, those people who don't know all that you do, obviously as an elementary principal, tell us a little about yourself. I feel like there might be something new for you. Yeah. There truly is something new, and there's a there's a very uh, exciting and welcome extension of the work that I've been doing to support uh, the Teach Better team. Uh, and that big news this week is that I am now a bona fide member of the Teach Better team, and uh, I'm excited to join the team. And I've been really, uh, really excited about the warm welcome I've received from all the team members and look forward to doing even more work and working even closer with the incredible members of Teach Better Team. So I'm excited and grateful for the opportunity. And yeah, I'm an official member. I've got my membership card around here somewhere. <laughs> you know, it's always fun when people in our community get involved in the Teach Better Team. There's so many different offshoots of the team. They can apply to become an ambassador. They can blog with us. I mean, truly the options are endless, but Brad, I was so excited when you were officially brought on as a team member within the Teach Better Team, kind of in the grind, working a lot in the background of what makes the Teach Better team kind of function. I'm so, 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 so thrilled that you're going to be contributing even more than you already have been and obviously continuously being a staple on Daily Drop. And we need that to continue. But we're so thrilled to not only have you a part of the family, which you've been a part for so long, but we're really bring you into the wonderful about 26 different members of the mm -hmm. Teach Better team that that make this all happen, right? All the people that, that make us look good here on the Daily Drop-In and with all the work we're able to do. What are you going to be doing specifically with the team? 
I'm going to be supporting a number of aspects of the team, Ray. And what makes this role truly exciting is that by supporting other team members, I also allow those members to flourish and, and to reach towards new goals and, and to reach new educators and, and family members. So I'm going to be supporting the Teach Better podcast uh, team. Uh, Joshua Stamper is the team lead on the podcast network. Uh, I'm going to continue to support uh, the admin mastermind as a mastermind mentor and and I, I guess occasional moderator. And I love that opportunity. You know, grateful to Jeff Gargas and Dave Schmidt for that opportunity. Uh, in my podcast role, I'm going to be uh, researching, onboarding, and uh, making sure that our podcasters are feeling well supported, well connected, and that the front end of our podcast network is looking and functioning as well as it can. And Behind the scenes, Ray, it's just a matter of, of continuing to learn with and support one another. And I think that I'm really well positioned to do that with my experiences and in my current role, but also I'm, I'm, I'm eager to learn. I, I'm still a learner. And uh, the more I learn and the more we learn about each other within the team, the better we can contribute. So uh, I'm a, a training and development specialist now with the Teach Better team. So I'm happy that I have an official title and, and an official role. Uh, and boy, I'm, I'm just so grateful for the opportunity, Ray. Thank you. Oh, Brian, it's going to be so much fun. It, it's really interesting as this role was really being crafted with you specifically in mind. You're you're such an outstanding facilitator. You're extremely approachable. You're always solution seeking. You're constantly looking to see how you can support or help somebody regardless of, of where they are in their educational journey. And as this role was coming together, just needing kind of more hands on deck, wanting people to feel welcomed, facilitating really important conversations in, in multiple different multi, uh, mastermind groups. I, I just, I'm so thrilled that this was able to happen and come together. We've been working on it behind the scenes for weeks. So I'm like thrilled that it's officially here. And and Brett, I'm so excited for this to be more of an official capacity. I know Karen in the comments was joking like, oh, I thought Brad was already on the team. And that's kind of how it's felt, right? Mm -hmm. You've been a part of Daily Drop-In. You've been contributing so much that uh, I'm thrilled that we were able to make it official and put the the green diamond on you and and make it a, a big celebration this morning. I'm thrilled too, and I'm very very happy uh, to celebrate along with the the official Teach Better sash uh, and tiara, uh, which came uh, from Andrea and Megan. And um, I've actually had the tiara at the jewelers this week getting clean, so that when I could make my official Teach Better debut, I'd have the sparkles of the tiara. My my sash, the satin's just going to sing and sparkle. So uh, I'm ready for my big uh, debut, Ray, and it'll be with uh, a debut with lots of bling. I do have to say, Brad, I think it's a rule of the Teach Better team that when you are brought on to the organization, you have to only wear Teach Better green from now on. I've been breaking that rule for quite some time, but I'm pretty sure. Did you did you sign your contract? You got the Teach Better green only in your closet now? Uh, that that's exactly right. There was a huge closet clean out over uh, over the past week. I do have my Teach Better green on this morning, and uh, yeah, I'm also going to be visiting the Teach Better swag store for even more green because everything I chucked, I've got to replace. So uh, you know, I'm I'm excited about the opportunity, and again, just the the opportunity to to serve and to allow others to flourish is is how I'm, how I'm hardwired, and I'm glad that's how it comes across. But that that's truly the case. And um, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity and grateful to learn along with you and the team. I love it. I do want to make sure that you don't get rid of your ambassador stuff because, Brad, I know that you're kind of like not an ambassador anymore because you joined the team. But I'll tell you, Brad, don't worry. All of our team members get to be like honorary ambassadors. Oh, yeah. Megan and Andrea, they've been essential in crafting that ambassador program. And I will tell you that I have begged them to be like, wait can I be like an honorary ambassador, even though I'm on the team? And their answer has after much, you know, grief. Yes, fine, Ray, you can be considered an ambassador too. So don't get rid of the beautiful teal ambassador swag. Don't get rid of the guest blogger swag. We still get to be honorary in those groups from what I understand. A part of the responsibility and part of the opportunity is to engage and make sure that all of our spaces are invitational. And so um, I, I try to embody uh, what an ambassador uh, could be or should be, and uh, you can count on that going forward. Absolutely. I love it. So fun. Well, as we continue to have technical difficulties, Brad, I don't know that you're seeing what I see on my end, but I have flashing buttons and flashing oh. things that really are very upset that we were not mm -hmm. streaming on our private group. So I just want to formally apologize for the you know, StreamYard, which is what we use to, to actually communicate with you every morning is 
is just not happy with us this morning. But we're going to transition here in just a second to our good news. We have some articles that we're going to be sharing with you. There's some celebrations for the day, and we're going to continue to kick off your Friday. So we'll be right back. All right, friends, you know how our good news segment works. Uh, We just want to make sure that we are starting off your morning with some good celebrations, possible conversation starters that you are able to use throughout your day. Brad, I always love that on Fridays you bring our good news story because you are always so dynamic with those ideas. Last week was so good with your mom's note. Like, holy cow. I, I felt like that was like the best good news that we've had on the show yet. So are you going to up your game this week or are we just going to stay stagnant? I don't mean to put pressure on, but there's a lot of pressure. Ray asked me before we went on air if I had the good news story ready. And I I have to say I do. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. Uh, And good news is the name of the game, Ray. And I'm wondering, Ray, we haven't hung out in person, but I'm imagining if we did go out, you might have a little bit of dancing queen in you. Could that be right? Oh, I love I love a good dance floor. Absolutely. Uh, I'm excited. I'm just the, the the title of this segment is "What's Making Brad Happy This Week," and what's made Brad happy is the return of Swedish supergroup ABBA. So, Ooh. yeah, ABBA has new music, and they have a new concert venue that's going to debut in London, England, in the new year. And what's making me happy, and what's been on repeat, 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 is ABBA's new al- new anthem called "I Still Have Faith." in you. It's a, it's a remarkable tribute to uh, the the history of the group. And Ray, it's, I believe it's the music that so many of us need right at this moment. So many of us are beyond tired. We're, we're bone weary. We are, we're calling on reserves that are only meant to be used in emergency purposes for the long term. I still have faith in you uh, is it's an anthem to ourselves. Uh, It's an anthem to the faith that we have uh, in a creator or in the universe. It's a faith that we have in each other to get through hard things. And it's also the faith that we have in our students. And uh, I've had, I still have faith in you on repeat. So ABBA uh, officially broke up in 1984, but they've never been. When when was the last time they put out music? But okay, 1984 was when they broke up originally. That's right. So um, they started recording in 1972. Uh, They had an incredible career. They were the world's top super group uh uh two two married couples came together to form abba and at the end of the career uh the couples divorced but continued to record and and continued to sort of live out the joys and the pains of those relationships with their music but they've never been far from our hearts or far from the airwaves have they because of uh movies like muriel's wedding uh priscilla queen of the desert and of course the the movie and stage phenomena mamma mia so mamma mia ray abba is back and I, I would love for our Teach Better family uh, or people that are hearing this later, after our podcast is complete, scoot on over to your favorite music service and look up I Still Have Faith in You. And if, if like me, ABBA's in your DNA, so my, my, my coming of age and my musical coming of age was with, with ABBA albums on vinyl. And it was something that our family listened to, sung together at home, in the car, so for me, when I saw this video of I Still Have Faith in You, there was a, a visceral, very emotional response, Ray. And it's, I, I just found it incredibly uplifting. And, you know, the, quest, the the song asked the question, do I have it in me? And then the response is, we still have it in us. New spirit has arrived. And it just, uh, okay, I've got all the goosies right now. I'm just saying two lines of the lyrics. But anyway, it's an incredible flourish of hope. Uh, And I hope that uh, our members find it as inspiring as I have. And it's something that you can absolutely, as a school leader, bring forward to your school and make that a morning music or or share some of the lyrics or in your classrooms. Uh, If ABBA is part of your DNA, you can share how you grew up with this music. And I'm sure it'll be familiar to most, but it's like time has stood still. And uh, 2021 is bringing ABBA back to our to our ears and to the stage in 2022. Unreal. I'm so excited for this. I have not heard this song. And if it wasn't against copyright laws, I would pull it up mm-hmm. on my phone and we'd play yep. it live with you right now. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do that. So I liked the call to action, Brad. Everybody write yourself a note that in, you know, 
30 minutes, you need to go and, and hunt down the song. Hopefully you stay with us for daily drop in. Um, but we understand if you need to pause and go listen to music, we, to be honest, guys, we kind of give you permission. This is a big deal. So I'm such a fan of this, Brad. I had no idea you, I I'm so thrilled you brought this to us this morning. In addition, Ray, I mean, uh, the, 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 the group members are in their sixties and seventies. And so in, rather than planning a world tour, what they're doing is they're crafting uh, a virtual reality concert, an immersive concert experience for a purpose built stadium uh, in London, England. And ABBA is going to be appearing as electronic virtual versions of themselves called avatars. No. Yes. Are you making this up? <laughs> no, I'm not. I don't believe you. No way. That's so cool. <laughs> well, then your mind is going to be blown when you look up ABBA Voyage Concert and you'll see the stadium and you'll see them in their motion capture outfits and they will be appearing on stage in 3D as avatars. Okay. Now I just have, we have to dive into this further. And I know this is Daily Drop It and we haven't even touched on education, but hold on. Brad, you do not live in London from what I understand, but and, and I know that we need to all be safe, obviously, with, with the global pandemic that continues to be a part of our daily lives. But will you go? Will you try? Would you even consider trying to go? Is there any way? Yes, uh, there, there, there is absolutely a way. Because when I was exploring the studio tour, or was I, when I was exploring the arena uh, presentation website, mm -hmm. I, I was looking about what would it take? What would it take to attend in person? What I'm very hopeful of, though, is that because the avatars could be transported to any stage in the world, that eventually it might tour or it might come to a movie theater or to IMAX. But uh, what is true is no matter where they are appearing live or virtually, uh, it's that thread of music that will sustain us. So I would absolutely love to go back to London, England and see this for myself. Uh, and and bring family members in, and even my children along too. Mm, I love it. I, you know, I have a feeling that this needs to not only be something we talk about now, but when we meet for our Teach Better Conference 2022 committee meetings, I think we need to figure out how to get them there. I mean, they could just be there virtually. That seems like a, a piece of Teach Better Conference that we need to have. I, I, we, we're going to do it. I, I don't know. We're going to do it. I, I do think we need to try it anyway, Ray. And uh, that's where we're at. We uh, we reach out and and we hope for the best. And often uh, we're very, very surprised with the results just by putting our hearts out there and, and hoping for the best. All right. We're all going to go look up new music. That was a great good news story. Absolutely something that is a discussion starter. We do joke that our good news stories are not just for us, but also as opportunities to continue to foster connections not only with our students, but with our colleagues, with our friends, with our family members, with our leadership teams. This goes across all of those communities. Every single group can benefit from this conversation. And uh, wow, Brad, you really, you took this up a notch. I'm impressed. I don't know how you're going to top it next week, but we're going to start only tuning in on Fridays just to see how <laughs> Brad up his, ups his game for good news. That'll be so good. For everybody else, I, I do, you know, have some celebrations that we can celebrate for this morning. It is September 24th, and there are plenty of holidays that are going to be celebrated today. Um, while there are so many, like Blue Bird of Happiness Day, which I know all of us count the days until we have that one. Also, German Sandwich Day, which just so you know, in this image looks absolutely delicious. It is also Heritage Day and um, Hug a Veteran Day. I know everybody can safely try to identify how to give those great hugs as we continue through this global pandemic. It's also National Brave Day. I would love to see that incorporated into classrooms. And um, National Punctuation Day. And I'm sure there's going to be some fun that some educators can have with National Punctuation Day, kind of those sentences where the punctuation completely changes the meaning, right? I think that could be a really fun way to celebrate that. I also, not on my list here, but on the list that Rachel provided us something I felt that was so important is that it's Native American Day. And so I'm not sure how everybody will choose to celebrate, but um, what a wonderful opportunity for us to have and foster those conversations. So lots to celebrate today, Brad, as we are jamming out to our music for sure. It's a great day to celebrate. Uh, here in Canada, we're approaching uh, a nationally recognized week of uh, a truth and reconciliation. Uh, and in, not only an invitation, but a call to action. 
uh, mm -hmm. for non-Aboriginal Canadians and I guess non-Aboriginal people all over the world to reflect on and recognize uh, the systemic harm and the continued oppression mm -hmm. that uh, Aboriginal and First Nations people have experienced. Um, and now is the time to shift from uh, awareness uh, to action, to doing what we can in our spaces to make sure that those oppressions and those lost opportunities in somehow somehow are uh, begin to be renewed, right? And is that being celebrated this week? Yeah, September the 30th is uh, the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation. Uh, and our focus in our district is, is truth before reconciliation. Uh, and so in our classrooms and learning spaces, we're, we're engaging in our communities in, with kids at an age appropriate and a developmentally appropriate way about uh, the, the history of, of oppression, the history of harm, uh, the history of residential schools in our country, um, and the lasting impacts. And the, this is not ancient history, Ray, at all. This is very recent history. And there are there is a generation of, of Aboriginal uh, people that have firsthand experienced uh, the harm of, uh, of, these re of residential schools and continue to bear the impact uh, in, in terms of society and limited access to everything that, to, to which they're entitled. So uh, let's move from intention to action on this. And, uh, and you can learn more about that at the Government of Canada website, if you wish. Ah, oh, beautiful call to action. I love that. I, there are so many to-do list items we're going to have to share out after this daily drop-in, everybody's morning checklist that we need to go through, because these are important conversations, important celebrations, and very, very valuable to then bring into the incorporation of other components of our day, which I really appreciate, Brad. I know in, in a few weeks, there's also, you guys have Thanksgiving coming up. I mean, there are some very, very fun holidays that we always enjoy bringing up to our Teach Better family. So this one is very, very important. Thank you for mentioning that. Mm -hmm. So, so good. Can I ask you a silly question before we transition? I what's specialize your weather, in it. What's your weather like today uh, where it, you're located? It's cool and drizzly. So it's around, I'm, I'm, I think it's in the high 50s, low 60s Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's kind of like liquid air, just a, a fog of, of tiny droplets right now. Okay, not so good, but it is cool. I mean, everybody's, as yeah. we continue to celebrate the beginning of fall, mm -hmm. another moment of celebration, um, that cool air, I feel like it was instantaneous. Like mm -hmm. it was warm and then all of a sudden, instantly we're in the 50s. I was listening to the news this morning as I was getting ready for the show and they reported that it was 42 degrees where I am. I was like, I'm sorry, 42 degrees, that must be wrong. <laughs> There's, I 42 degrees, that's winter. We're, we're getting into this is ridiculous. So for all of you out there this morning, as you're getting dressed, make sure you check the weather because it's a little bit chilly and possibly rainy, depending on where you're located, for sure. For everyone that was just wishing for fall, it's like, enjoy the wet, soggy, cold, bone chilling weather. Happy fall. <laughs> I do love, I do love fall. My problem is on occasion where I live in Chicago, where we get all four seasons, mm -hmm. Sometimes like the world decides to skip fall and we go straight to winter, which I don't very much appreciate. I would like some consistent fall weather. You know, I'm that I'm that very predictable millennial where I want to break out the sweaters. I, I don't want to go straight to, to, to snow yet. I'm looking for some fall leaves. You know, give me my fall. It's the kind of weather that uh, yeah, makes you regret that you put a sweater on in the morning because by the afternoon it could be in the 70s and it's like, I'm just roasting right now, but you know, we just, we just ride things out. We ride things out until things are, you know, until things are stable and, you know, the, make sure that our wardrobe staples are ready. Right. Well, and Brad, you're rocking the layers. That's my recommendation. Always. Once you enter into fall, you just need to layer constantly because the hope would be that throughout your day, you can just adjust as needed. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it really is a public service, Ray. Wouldn't you agree that, I mean, if we're layered and we're, we're switching out outfits, it's a, it's a form of uh, entertainment and, and, little novelty for, you know, our staff members or families. What's Brad going to wear after recess? Oh, he's rocking the, uh, the sweater with the, with the cuffs rolled up and Oh, it, it warmed up. So now Brad's got the floral shirt on and the sandals. So, um, you know, it's, I think it's a public service to really just have fashion shows anytime that you have the opportunity. Brad, I, as we transition here into the, um, next segment, I will say, we all wish we worked in your elementary school so that we could not only enjoy the fashion, but also the incredible music that you offer. I mean, truly, you know, this this is really a, a dream that we all have that we just get a, a glimpse of on Daily Drop-In every Friday. It's so much fun. 
I'm happy to share a glimpse and honestly, uh, your enjoyment and the enjoyment of the viewers and listeners mm -hmm. is, is it's fueling for me. So I'm going to continue to share four of the great things and, and hope that we can share them out into our networks and own school communities too. I love it. We're going to transition here into our brainstorm bank where we intentionally take a moment to pause and reach out to our community and say, Hey, do you need anything that we can help with? So we'll be here to take your questions live and also wrap up our wonderful conversation, what we have been having all week for our daily drop-in theme, dedicated to reflecting on our communication thus far and making adjustments and improvements as we continue throughout the year. So we'll be right back. I would love to transition into this segment, Brad, but I'm so distracted by the comments because I really see educators celebrating National Punctuation Day. And I just think that that's going to be so funny. The, the joke right now that Andrea has been posting is let's eat grandma with that punctuation where if the comma exists or the comma doesn't exist, it's a very, very different sentence. So shout out to all those educators that are going to be having some fun today with, uh, with those goofy pieces. You know, as, as all of you know, our Brainstorm Bank segment, which usually happens earlier, we're running a little behind today. It's because we've been goofing off a little bit, to be honest. But um, really is a time where we intentionally pause and say, hey, friends, do you need anything? You know, the Teach Better community exists in so many different spaces. We love that we are a global community of educators that truly believes in finding solutions to the dilemmas that exist in our classroom simply by sharing and discussing ideas. We don't always have the right answer for you, but we would love to brainstorm with you and connect you with other educators that can help. Brad and I love also being able to wrap up conversations from the week as you continue to provide some reflection on our weekly themes. This theme all about communication, Brad, I knew was going to be a good one for you and I to discuss. So as a leader, what has been your experience with communication thus far? How's that going for you? And shout out to even more technical difficulties that we're having on this end. Looks like we just lost our Twitch stream. So if you are watching on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, you're still good, but we're just going to keep running into tech issues this morning, Brad. I think we're going to funnel people to the one and only working feed, which makes it even more exclusive. We, we want to make sure that people that are joining us are sharing whatever working feed they have back to their networks and bringing people in because we want to want to make sure that we reach as many as we can. And no, and, no. and that, that's I mean, that, that 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 leads me into some thoughts about communication, Ray, is, is there are there are best laid plans and then there are setbacks in communication that you need to address and address them as quickly as you can. As we've been returning to in-person education in Ontario, there has been an overwhelming amount of communication around uh, COVID protocols, uh, procedures, uh, policies, and there's a tremendous amount of communication as well uh, to staff members about how to make classroom spaces and schools welcoming for students that have experienced any number of difficulties, including trauma as a result of the pandemic. It, when that happens, it's hard to know how to reach people in the right way. Uh, it th There appears to be too much to share and not enough time to share it in person. And so you try email, you try message on the whiteboard. It It's important to layer communication as much as possible and then to seek to find the channels that are working, the channels that are reaching people. Because it's one thing to reach out, but then as a school leader, you can't get frustrated when there's no reach back if what you're reaching out actually isn't reaching the people. It's that disconnect between intent and impact. If your intent is to reach everyone, you have to make sure that the impact is people are reached. It's it's another, that's one of the tenets of communication I'm constantly trying to refine is, is the communication, is what I intend actually having the impact? And if there's a mis mismatch, I need to rally people around me, let me know, okay, Brad, there's a mismatch or something we're not getting. We've got a question we don't understand. And uh, school leaders and educators in general have to welcome those kind of questions, not as criticisms or indications that you're falling short, but questions let us know that there's a gap and there's those questions are probably shared by others as well, Ray. So that that's the constant tension right now is when there's so much information, how do we make sure it's reaching people in a way that's effective, not just to receive it, but to you know take action on it. And how do we make sure that there's that that we're addressing gaps between intent and impact? We can't eliminate those gaps. I think they are natural. They're going to happen. So how do we have feedback mechanisms that help us address it when they happen? 
Well, and I think you're touching on so many different components that I, I think is so valuable to reflect on this opportunity of reflecting on the layers in which we communicate. You, you give so many different examples that we have not touched on. Simple communication is posting something on a whiteboard or, you know, sending a quick message out to the staff. Um, but in addition to that, you're also discussing what data you're collecting after the communication is sent out to ensure that you were able to achieve what the end goal was, which which is really hard to identify sometimes. We've discussed on this show a few different situations, the opportunity we have to identify a measurable to decide if we're being successful. Communication, um, a major measurable is knowing, did people get what you were trying to share? And that's not only important data to collect, but very, very important to analyze and reflect on and, and make adjustments. And sometimes that's really tricky to do. It is, especially if uh, you take uh, if you take feedback about setbacks or the the mismatch between intent and impact. Personally, we have to decenter ourselves from the communication. You know, as as school leaders or as educators, we're communicating forward things that are essential to do and to know. And so we have to do all we can to depersonalize it. Like you are not the message. Uh, you are uh, the conveyor of the, of the message. You are the facilitator of understanding of the message. And so, as school leader, one of my key responsibilities is to help frame information I receive in ways that make sense to the people that I serve and to always be open to uh, refining the communication or clarifying if it doesn't make sense. Uh, let's face it, our, so many of our colleagues are already at overwhelm. And so when we are, when we are there, we, we don't receive communication well because our headspace is filled with what do I have to do now? And sometimes we don't even know what it is. And so then to receive additional communication layers upon layers, that just feeds the overwhelm. And some people just shut down. They just shut it off because they, they need to take care of business. They need to take care of welcoming kids into spaces, teaching kids in the spaces, seeing them off safely. And so it, it's a matter of respect for what people are going through. And just, just, just name it. Just name that you see the overwhelm. You respect mm -hmm. the stress that people are under and seeking to understand how can we best communicate with you this essential on essential information to make sure that you can action it help us uh, help us figure out any feet help us figure out any gaps in those communications absolutely you know there's so many layers to this conversation i mean even just your example of all the layers of communication that should and are, can exist as we continue throughout the year whether we've been in school for 2 weeks or 2 months the opportunity that we have to constantly revamp not only a, a ton of different areas, but specifically with our communication style, what do you think are the three essential questions or three essential strategies that as an educator, if I'm going to take an intentional moment to say, okay, I'm going to pause, put it on my calendar, like Joshua Stamper recommended yesterday, I'm going to intentionally reflect on my communication. What do you feel like are the three essential questions I should ask myself to know if my communication is being effective this week or if I need to make an adjustment? One of the feedback mechanisms is if you've uh, indicated an action item and it's not being put into place, sure. then you don't get frustrated or mad that that hasn't happened. You ask yourself, why and why now? What conditions are making it hard for the people that you serve and support? to incorporate that information and make it actionable. So some key things to think about are, is, is the message simple enough to be understood? Mm -hmm. Because there's no question that there's a lot of technical information that is really just being created on the spot in, in, terms, of, uh, in terms of meeting immediate needs. So is the message simple enough to be understood? Uh, second, is the message, does the message include the action that people need to take? And so it's one thing to say, here's the information. You also have to take the next step and say, based on this information, here's what you need to do. Um, and number three, do you have uh, in the communication some way of checking for understanding? Is If you're having a face-to-face -face conversation, it, it's asking not just do you have any questions, but what questions might you have? A little refinement there can make it more invitational for people to to help, help, help them assume that you are welcoming questions. Not Do you have any questions that got to go? But what questions might you have about that? Um, a final thing that I always ask uh, staff members as I'm greeting them is, what can I do to support your work today? And when I do that, 
I'm inviting a, a constant feedback about, okay, remember when you asked or remember when we received that message about, and so being present, uh, I guess that's kind of like a little, uh, a little bonus one uh, in addition to uh, clarity, action, feedback. Uh, if you little asterisk is, are, are you out there making sure that you're present for people whose best mode of communication is face to face? Because if you're waiting for people to read a volume of emails and you know how quickly our in, in, inboxes fill up, right? Ray, so um, get out there and just make sure you're checking in personally to see if there's anything that they need you to know or that you can help them. You know, Brad, I continuously enjoy our conversations um, around a variety of topics because you put things in a way that I find to be very simple to understand. And the way that you just broke down those three with the bonus of a fourth, kind of like questions that we need to be asking ourselves during our reflection really allows all of us to see reflection as a very manageable thing that we can incorporate into our life. It, it wasn't an overwhelming um, a question. It was, you know, three to four simple steps that we can say, check, 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 as we're going through our process. But I'll also tell you, Brad, there was so much similarity in those three questions in that we're asking ourselves for communication purposes and the connection of how we design lesson plans when we are communicating with students, right? The I want to make sure that I we are constantly bringing up that some of the things that we do for parents, that we do for leadership, that we provide to stakeholders, even that we do with our colleagues, so easily mirrors the work that we're already doing and being effective with when we're working with our four-year-olds or 11-year-olds or 17-year-olds in the classroom. And so rather than seeing these as two different hurdles to overcome, there are incredible similarities to the questions we ask when we're trying to ensure we're communicating and the questions we ask to ensure that we provided our students good instruction. So true, Ray. And the, the mechanisms for communication that we incorporate in our working lives, as well as the mechanisms for professional learning around that information, mm -hmm. have to model the best instruction that we can possibly offer that we would offer to our kids. Mm -hmm. um, even if we don't, as school leaders or educators name, wow, just like we said, wow, this is just like how we might uh, invite kids into learning. Everything speaks, even if you are not aware of it, the, the way that we communicate with one another and the way that we seek and, and incorporate feedback, which is a key, you know, one of the key loops in our, in our educational spaces, the way that we seek and incorporate feedback for improvement or growth, it's all got to be built in. Uh, mm -hmm. Something that I am frequently guilty, guilty of uh, in my personal and professional life is burying the lead. I want to make sure that people are, you know, soothed, reassured, supported. And by the way, there's this, information, there's this information at the very end. So what I'm trying to get a little bit better at every day is don't bury the lead, be, be direct. And I, I want to keep coming back to those three things I said, just lead with the information people need. What do you want to do? What do you need to have done about it? what questions might you have? So, mm -hmm. and it, it all serves to teach better mindset because if we're, if we are truly striving to be a little bit better each day, we have to incorporate feedback as part of that better. Uh, that's uh, just a, just a natural part of the mindset that we're trying to promote. Oh, so important. I feel like those three questions slash four, we'll, we'll, we'll continue to add in that bonus, <laughs> um, would be a really easy like post-it to throw on my computer. You know, I'm, I'm kind of that post-it educator where I write things down constantly. I have a to-do list that just, I constantly add to, I love the art of being able to cross things off and mm -hmm. double check when I hear really good advice and being able to double check what I'm doing day to day with that advice that I really want to live by or, or work with. Those, those questions in, in just a very simple way, we so good on like a bright pink post-it on my laptop. I'm just telling you, Brad, that was so valuable. Thanks, Ray. And I think that also what we're promoting here all it works for all kinds of communication. I, I think of all of the communication that we seek to provide for our families and caregivers about school life or about to-dos or about the learning that's going on. And frequently we, we push the information out and we may be disappointed when we get no response or we get repeat questions. We have to remind ourselves that just like us, you know, families are living through a pandemic and their ability to receive communication may be limited in unexpected ways. Their ability to understand communication may be limited by a number of things, including home language or lack of reliable access to technology or just stress. Uh, of of managing uh, and and surviving 
uh, household life in a pandemic. And so if you can incorporate some kind of feedback, even if it's an email message, if you're sending an email message, you know, send me a, please send me a quick response. Let me know you received this. Um, I tried this in a communication that I had with parents last week about an important matter. And, and it was essential that I had some opportunity to confirm they responded. And this gives me a feedback loop. I, I've, for example, had five out of eight responses. I'll make sure with a phone call, not the same mode of communication. I don't want to keep emailing and emailing and emailing if the first one was a barrier. So I'm going to reach out with a phone call and maybe I can reach them just to confirm. So you have to, you know, over, you know, gradually allow yourself time to take action on those feedback loops. And above all, don't take it personally. It's probably not you. It's probably something that is out of your control. All that you can control is continuing to be positive, proactive, and changing up the mode of communication to try to meet the needs of the person receiving it. Mm, so valuable. You know, um, Brad, it's funny. I To kind of wrap up this dialogue as we go into recapping our week before we head into our incredible Friday ahead of us, there's a little like funny element here when you when you discuss, you know, hit reply, let us know that you got this email, that mindset um, on, for the Teach Better team internally when we're working on different projects that we're able to provide our incredible network. Um, we very often have information that's shared internally with the team and we've gotten into this goofy practice. I think this was a Jeff Gargas like implementation very, very early on. This has been happening ever since I've been on the team. I know at least. So that's been a bit is that the response to confirm you got something is a phrase that that is like included in the message. So if you've understood what's here, you know, copy and paste this phrase in the comments and, and we'll know that you got it. And those phrases have gotten ridiculous. Sometimes it's Donkey Kong. Sometimes it's, you know, pickle juice. Other times it's good to go, boss. Sometimes, um, sometimes depending on who the task is about, it's a phrase, something along the lines of, yes, Chad is the smartest person on the planet. You know, there's all these like funny phrases. And I think as we kind of add, you know, cutesy and fun layers of our communication, how funny would it be to kind of weed in some of those opportunities to have a parent or student respond back that they understood something with a goofy phrase to really ensure they not only read the information, but maybe also got a chuckle out of the experience. So I know, Brad, you're going to see this a lot now that you're officially a part of the Teach Better team, which we're so excited to celebrate. But I have warned you officially of the goofy phrases that exist in our in our management system. <laughs> Goofy phrases, Ray, are absolutely in my wheelhouse. And I think that your suggestion is spot on. This is something that uh, would just delight families to, you know, send me a message. Like you just pick out a small key message or uh, it's that element of surprise. It can be a gift in communication is, yeah, I wasn't expecting the teacher to ask me to re reply dill pickles, but I'm going to do it. And I don't know why, but <laughs> that's your feedback loop. And you can do that in the classroom too, uh, you know. Kids, if you understood that, give me one thumb up and one thumb down. Or kids, if you've got it, say banana splits or just keep that element of surprise going. And it giving people a purpose for listening is also one of those little asterisks as well is why should this matter to me? Well, if, if the payoff is a little bit of delight and surprise, then uh, you'll have people listening. So good. We're going to get into a really quick weekly, weekly recap before we conclude our conversation here today. So stick with us and you guys know this is my favorite tune that we play all week. So take a deep breath in. Here we go. I just love that jam, Brad. I don't know what to say. It just is my jam. <laughs> I feel that jam in my bones, and I think it's because we're anticipating the wrap-up of, of, of another great week and anticipating uh, digging into some great things to come. So true. We have had a wonderful week discussing uh, intentional reflection on our communication. I hope you guys go back, if you haven't already, to be a part, an active participant of the Daily Drop-In. And even if you're catching the replays, you can watch it over on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch, or as an episode of Teach Better Talk podcast. Even with today's technical difficulties, I will tell you, you could probably still go find this episode. So if you ever have any problems hunting down an episode that you heard about and want to go back and re-watch or re-listen to, please just feel free to reach out anytime. We're always here to help. There has been a lot of discussions this week, so I'm going to go through them quickly, some key highlights that I really want to make sure you all catch. One is that, of course, on Monday, we started with Jeff Gargas. Always fun to kick off the week with boss man, Mr. Jeff Gargas. 
we were able to touch on a lot of different things. And um, as we kind of went into our reflection of communication, there was a lot of reflection on communication styles that we currently practice with our community, and then also how we can incorporate those into our classrooms really in the trenches with students. Tuesday was a beautiful discussion because Evan Schwartz was able to join us. He's doing incredible work uh, with a company called Beluga that he recently founded that really focused on communication through video and making sure that we have connected classrooms as an avenue for communication. So definitely go check that out as a free, free program that has an incredible interface to support educators being able to bring extremely relevant, hard hitting topics um, into their classrooms, very high interest. On Wednesday, uh, Debbie Tenenbaum joined us. She's been a member of our Teach Better family for quite some time. She likes to really focus on technology and definitely brought some good discussion to our community about how she's been able to communicate not only with students, but also with her work as a coach to support teachers in the building. And then Brad, I know you didn't miss Thursday because Thursday was with the one and only Joshua Stamper who published a book this week. And we are able to have that continued communication around leadership communication, which was a huge focus of his book. And Brad, us being able to wrap up that conversation essentially today together with those three to four questions, I feel like kind of added that bow on top of this dialogue. So I really, really appreciate the, the communication so far. Something that I continue to take and be inspired by, uh, by what Joshua Stamper is is doing and living is uh, part of our conversation too, Ray, is it's incorporating feedback for growth. Uh, in his book, he describes his growth through many setbacks towards school, community, uh, and, and, and ultimately organizational leadership. Um, not an easy path. And none of us are walking easy paths right now. We also have the opportunity if we choose and have the capacity to continue to promote that teach better, learn through practice mindset, because it is so, so easy to get discouraged. And as Joshua describes in his book, and as he described to you, Ray, uh, it would have been very easy for him to throw in a towel and say, okay, I, I'm out, I'm, I'm taking a different path. But uh, staying on the path is what leaders do. Even if the path is unclear, uh, leaders get people together and say, where's the path? What, what's our best next step? And clear and effective communication can be a part of that. But uh, what resonates with me, Ray, is Joshua's continued commitment to ongoing improvement for growth. Um, it's, it, and he will tell you, it, it, it makes him the person that he is today, both personally and uh, professionally. And uh, it, it's all part of communication. Oh, so important. There's been some great dialogue on this. And don't forget, we also spent an entire week a few months, a few weeks ago, we spent an entire week for daily drop-in on communication strategies. So this is two full weeks, five hours each, 10 professional development hours right there on how we can com continue to enhance and, and up our communication game. So regardless of where you are in your journey, please feel free to continue to engage with us. And of course, we will bring back this theme as many times as we need, if it is at all helpful for you. So continue to reach out to us and let us know what you want being discussed on Daily Drop-In. Next week is a very, very, very special week in my mind. So Brad, I'm so thrilled that you'll be back again next week to discuss the power of questioning, which is a non-negotiable, that is, is so important that we continue to enhance the art of asking questions and strategically asking questions to get the information we need to continue to serve our students. We have wonderful guests joining us. Obviously, we're kicking off Monday with the one and only Jeff Gargas. Then we have Tom Shimmer joining us, who is an incredible educator mm -hmm. and podcaster, a part of our podcast network. If you don't know Tom, you are missing out on a, a very, very bright uh, educator to add to our network. So definitely tune in on Tuesday for that. Of course, Dave Schmidow joining the conversation. On Wednesday, he is the 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 king of asking questions. You might have a thing to say or a thing or two to say about questions, Ava. Just an idea or two. Yeah, I mean, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> and then on Thursday, um, we will have Andrea Bittner joining us. So, and obviously Friday closing out with us. So it's gonna be such a good dialogue next week around the art that we have, the power of asking good questions. So make sure you stick around for that next week. Brad, we are gonna wrap up our daily drop-in here this morning, but Thank you so much for joining us. I'm so thrilled that we're able to celebrate your official title 
on the Teach Better team after weeks and weeks of keeping this secret. And um, I'm just so thrilled to wish everybody a wonderful weekend, right? It'll be a great weekend. It's going to be a great weekend ahead. Looking ahead to next week, you know, it, it gives us an opportunity to really position ourselves as learners among learners in our spaces. When we pose the questions, we're taking a stance of curiosity. We, we want to seek answers that lead to more questions. Uh, so many times, educators, we feel we have to position ourselves as the knowers. It's so freeing and it's so creative to position ourselves as the questioners and the co-learners along with, you know, as uh, Becky Schnexer would say, along with those explorers, those, those seekers of knowledge and, and seekers of adventure. So I'm looking forward to digging into questioning the next week, Ray. And my question for you is how do you plan to spend this weekend and, and, and recoup some of that lost energy this week? Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm definitely going to do some hikes with the dogs. That is on the list. I don't know when it's happening, but I, I will either happen Saturday and Sunday or at least on Saturday. I need some, I need some time away to disconnect and yep. reset my brain. So it's going to be a good weekend, I hope. Brad, do you have big plans this weekend? Just the same. And and, and our wish for everyone too, Ray, is, is to just find what time you can to reconnect with the people and the things that you love that are, are personal to you. Because as educators, we give so much and devote so much time and energy to others. It's important that we invest whatever time we can to, to refill our own buckets uh, and to, I guess, re- Re, find find that spark of faith again uh, that we we've got this we do have it in us so uh, I'm looking forward to a weekend of a little bit of restoration and and renewed energy for next week yes please make sure you have a wonderful wonderful Friday keep that positive mindset let us know of course if you need anything if we can be here to brainstorm any solution you might need we are always here to be your buddies in that we also wish you a fabulous weekend and we will see you again bright and early. Monday morning for Daily Drop-In at 7 a.m. Eastern, streaming on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch, and also as episodes of Teach Better Talk podcast. So see you later, friends. See you later. Cheers, everyone. Cheers.